Hi there, Susan McGarry Glass here. And I wanted to go over signing your work and some of the options. There's several, several options, but I'm just gonna go over a few of them. The reason to sign your glass work is uh, if you're giving it as a gift or selling it and you want it to be identified as something that you made, then you would want to sign it. There are times that people will ask you to sign your work if they're buying something from you. So you want to have those options. Uh, you want to know about those options so that you're prepared for something like that. So let's go over a couple of them. I've actually bought a piece from somebody who used a Sharpie to sign his work. And it wasn't my favorite because it can come off. So I'm, for today, just going to use a heart. Let's say that's my signature for today. So you would just sign your work with a Sharpie marker on the front or back. Most likely it's going to be on the back. But to me that's not looking very professional. It can rub off later. So that's not my favorite. And another option is using these painter's pens, and I'll just do it on the same piece of glass. You just press into it, and the ink starts to flow, and then you heat set it, or you can use glass pens, pens that are actually meant for glass, and you heat set it in your oven. And that's not a bad idea. It gives you a way to sign your work but without changing the shape of your glass. You don't have to put it back in the kiln, it just heat sets in the oven. All right, another option is to do kiln carving. And we've talked about this in a previous broadcast. You take your signature in some way, whether it's hand cut or cut on one of those vinyl cutters, and you cut out the shape that is your signature. And you can get very detailed with those. And when you fuse your glass, it will create your signature on the back of the glass. So that's kind of fun, but you can't use that on everything. If you go to slump your work later, maybe it's a large bowl, you may lose that detail if your little fiber paper comes out. But that's definitely an option. I like this one a lot. Another option is painting it on with paint that is meant to fuse. So this is a glass enamel. You would just get a little on your brush, put it on the front or back of your glass, and paint on your signature. Now here you can you can write it, you know, do it script if you if you've got, you want to hand sign it with your hands, you know, your your signature. And then you would fire this. But most of these paints require that you go all the way up to a full fuse. And if you've got a piece that is shaped, uh, you would have to think about doing that before um, you go into your slump or fire polish. So you, it would be something you would have to do at the very beginning. But that's an option. Another one that would have to be done at the very beginning is using these, these essence. Gold essence, uh, silver, I think they're silver. Um, and it's meant for glass. It's a precious metal, and this one's um, this one in particular is gold. And you use these little writers. See that fine little tip right there? So it's kind of nice. If you want to get your signature, you can write very detailed things with it. And what you do is put a little bit of the gold in there and write. For this, I didn't necessarily need to get very detailed. So what I did was use the back of a paintbrush, dip it in there, and just use the back of the paintbrush to get the shape of a heart. It's very expensive, very expensive. So if you're gonna sign a lot of pieces, that's something to consider is it's expensive to use. And once you fill this little cavity, there's no putting it back in. So you generally will use it all or dispose of it. So that can be a very expensive way to sign your, your art. It also has to be full fused. And it can be temperamental if you don't have it the right thickness. Uh, it's, it's absolutely beautiful. I love using it. Wouldn't be my choice for signing my work though. All right, another option is to use 
a Dremel type tool and etch your signature in. Now this can be done at any time. It can be done on the back of your work, on the edge of your work, on the front of your work. After it's full fused, um, after it's slumped, so it can be done at the end and really you want to get it a little wet and then start etching. So that's an easy way. It doesn't take away from the artwork and you can get pretty detailed with it. So I like that way. That's a real nice way to sign your work. You can also put the date if you want to put your initials and the year that you did it. Uh, easy way to do it. One problem is if you slip, this is a finished piece of artwork, remember, if you slip, there's no real correcting it. So you want to keep, keep that in mind. Another way, and the final way, is using a titanium glass marking pen. The, the key to this is getting it wet. You want your piece to be wet to make it permanent. And then you would etch into it just like you would with a pen or pencil. When you dry the piece, it stays permanent. A little silver mark on there. Let's see if you can see that. That's, it's difficult to see on camera. It looks like I've drawn with a pencil but it's going to stay permanently. Just remember the key to this is getting it wet. That's what helps titanium transfer onto the glass. It's one of my favorite ways to sign my work. So when you look at all of these, they all have different possibilities and options, but my preference would be either hand etching with a Dremel type tool or using the titanium pen. All right, I hope this helped you guys. I hope you start signing your work. Thanks for joining me and be cool, honey bunnies. Bye.